In 15 years since two Luzerne County judges were accused of taking kickbacks in exchange for clearing the way for a privately run juvenile detention center. That scandal became known as Kids for Cash. The effects of Kids for Cash can be felt even now as a new crisis unfolds within the juvenile justice system in Luzerne County and beyond. Action 16 investigates reporter Melissa Steininger has been working for months to uncover this hidden issue. She joins us now with what she's found. Melissa. Yes, Scott Lisa. Law enforcement says it's been grappling with violence and gangs among teens in our area. In January, a man barely out of his teens was charged with shooting a Scranton police detective in the head. Just days later, Scranton police arrested a teenager from Wilkes-Barre as he walked towards Scranton High School carrying a rifle. Now, many officials cite one common Common factor, a shortage of juvenile detention beds. Officials say we went from one extreme to the other in Luzerne County. Now they have nowhere to put the area's most violent young offenders, and they're scrambling to fix what's being called a broken justice system. The cloud of what's become known as the Kids for Cash scandal still hangs over Luzerne County 15 years later. Because I didn't understand how I could be guilty of a kickback. It's believed to be our country's biggest judicial corruption scandal, but in its wake, another crisis is unfolding within Luzerne County's juvenile justice system. They know the system and they know how it works and they know right now, over the last few years, you could pretty much do whatever you want and nothing's really going to happen to you. Effects of Kids for Cash can be found in every corner of Luzerne County, and because of it, lives have been changed forever. It's not fair, it's not right. He didn't deserve that, no kid deserves that. Inside her home in Plymouth, Sarah Chicalo now clings to the memories of what her life looked like before May of last year. An hour later, a kid ran through my house and said, uh, oh, was shot, and then I, I didn't know, I just dropped everything and just ran out the door. Sarah says her son, Owen, was shot in the head at an apartment with friends on South Franklin Street in Plymouth. Owen was just 14 years old at the time. Sarah says he was found alone when the ambulance arrived. I mean, they should have been there for him. He wouldn't have left them. So far, no charges have been filed in Owen's case. The Luzerne County District Attorney tells us the suspected shooter should have been in juvenile detention for previous crimes at the time of the shooting, but there were no facilities available. So Put them in the adults. They want to act like adults, then treat them like one. Mm. And while Owen's recovery has been a miraculous one, his story isn't unique. Law enforcement, school districts, and Luzerne County officials are all working to combat violence among teens in incredible numbers. Kingston Police Chief Richard Kochick says his department made 144 arrests at the Wyoming Valley West Middle School during the 2021-2022 school year alone. That's nearly one arrest each day. I took it personal. I took it personal as, as I watched what was going on in these schools. Uh, I went to these schools and, you know, our calls for service were unbelievable. These agencies all believe it stems from one issue, a lack of detention beds. There is no punishment for them. We don't see anything that's being done. So how exactly did we get here? People working on all levels of Pennsylvania's juvenile justice system believe this current crisis started with reforms and changes that stemmed from the Kids for Cash scandal. I was always there for those kids, and, and I resent the fact that people think I did something improper. That's former Luzerne County Judge Mark Chivarella back in 2009. He and Luzerne County's former President Judge Michael Conahan were accused of shutting down the county-run juvenile detention center and accepting millions in kickbacks from the builder and co-owner of two for-profit detention centers, one of them near Pittston. That I will impose the maximum sentence allowed by law. Chivarella presided over juvenile court and pushed a zero tolerance policy that often guaranteed harsh sentences and included placement at those facilities for minor offenses. Judge Michael Vogue has served Luzerne County for the past 12 years as president judge, the role previously held by Conahan. Like nothing would happen here would ever happen again because of the safeguards that were put in place by the legislature after what happened here. After 
the Kids for Cash scandal, there's been an overhaul of the juvenile justice system in Pennsylvania. Kids must now be represented by a lawyer throughout their entire process in juvenile court. All of the kids who appeared before Chivarella between 03 and 08 had their records expunged. Nearly 2,500 of them. No, you know what he told everybody in court? They need to be held accountable for their actions. You need to be. Do you remember me? But since then, the Council of Chief Juvenile Probation Officers reports there's been a 74% decline in the number of kids getting sent to detention facilities. That stark drop prompted the closure of a dozen private and county-run detention centers across the state. The pendulum has swung so far to the other side that now it's to the point where there are no consequences for actions. Those closures have created a shortage of youth detention beds. These spaces serve as a safe place for a child to stay while their case is being handled in court or for those who commit a crime serious enough to be removed from the community. Frustration with the lack of beds is not because we want to place more children. The frustration with the lack of beds is that when we do have that rare instance where placement is necessary, we can't right now. According to the Pennsylvania Juvenile Court Judges Commission, Pennsylvania currently has 513 detention center beds licensed by the State Department of Human Services. But there are not enough workers, and only 366 of those beds are actually operational. If we don't correct this, we're going to see those 50% reduction in allegations. It's going to start skyrocketing. About half of those operational beds were designated by the courts for kids from Philadelphia. And seven counties operate their own beds, leaving just 15 secure detention beds available to serve 60 counties across Pennsylvania. And there's not a single detention bed in all of Northeast PA. All these counties are competing for the same beds, but the beds aren't in our area. So you're, you're competing, you know, in that Philadelphia region, um, Western PA, and, and so on. So even Ohio, people are, are, kids are being sent to. Without a single one available in or near Luzerne County, Propation Director Kevin Perluke says the county has nowhere to house their most violent offenders. Kids arrested for gun crimes, aggravated assault, robberies, or even fighting in schools. We're not looking to detain every kid that comes on juvenile probation, but there is a small amount that need to be detained. Unfortunately, they're back in the schools. They're on our caseload causing stress to our probation officers who all know that these kids should be placed somewhere and they're back in the community. Police and Luzerne County probation officers often drive hours and even states away to find a bed. And if they do find one, the facility has the right to reject a child. We're not doing anything with them. There's nowhere to go with them. Um, and when they do find a placement or they do have a placement um, outside of cost, I could say that manpower wise for us, it's it's a burden, an enormous burden. The Pennsylvania Juvenile Court Judges Commission estimates that 12 counties throughout northeastern Pennsylvania would need anywhere from about 35 to 43 detention beds. But without a single one, we're coming back and re-arresting the same juveniles two, three, four times. It's a safety crisis because what we need to do now is because we can't place them, we put them on ankle monitors uh, with electronic monitoring to see where they are. Um, but we've had children cut the monitors off, we've had children run, we've had children offend. And oftentimes these young offenders end up back on the streets and even in school hallways and they can be back in your classroom on Monday with or without an ankle bracelet or you not even knowing it. That's a problem. We're failing them. We're failing the kids, the good kids, the kids that want to be there, the kids that want to learn, that are afraid to go to the bathroom, that are afraid to walk the halls because of violence. Failing a community and failing our kids, something Sarah Chicolo also feels as this mom from Plymouth continues to wait for answers. We better build another building, put these kids in. They're like running around like animals. Like, look at my son now. This is just the beginning of us diving into this crisis. Tomorrow, we'll show you how the lack of detention beds is now affecting the classrooms in our schools, why some believe it's contributing to the teacher shortage in Luzerne County, 
and what our schools are doing to help curb the violence in the hallways. Now, I also reached out to former Judge Mark Chivarella in jail, asking if he wanted to take part in this series. He declined that offer, but wrote me back to say that he hopes these stories will help bring change to Luzerne County's juvenile justice system. Scott and Lisa.